All right, so whether or not the topics are connected, uh, to speak after Joy and Stella is just malice. <laughs> so we'll start with my, I was informed it was a lightning talk. I saw something else going on. However, my name is Alice Chibombo Ekanya. I'm representing the Wikimedia Community User Group in Uganda, and I would like to share our experience with personal data and the Wikimedian. So I'd like to give you the background, the story that led to this. Uh, we were formed in 2014, and then in between 2019 and 2021, we were registered with the government formally because as an entity that was receiving funds from the Wikimedia Foundation, dealing with international organizations, there is some business that we were not able to transact because we were not a legally registered organization. So we registered as a non-governmental organization. We did not register as a community group, but an NGO because we had plans to expand and that meant that we had to give a lot of information to the government bodies, uh, things like um, the details about directors. You have to submit their copies of their national IDs, then a copy of their passport, personal bank statements, things that are not directly related to the organization, but they are still needed. And uh, we would submit, we would comply, until one day we got a um, very menacing email from a regulatory body called uh, the PDPO, the Personal Data and Privacy Office. It is um, a branch of, I don't even know how to put it, but just know that it operates with the government. And they said that we had to register with them uh, because we had been identified as data creators, data controllers, and data consumers. Now, we don't know why we were classified as that, but we had to register with them by a certain date. And not only register with them, we had to pay. It's an annual subscription. It's around, um, let me, maybe 350,000 Uganda shillings annually and their penalties for not renewing that subscription, that's around $100 annually. So that is what prompted us to think about this situation. So the talk is about personal data on the organizational level, not on a personal level. Next slide, please. So personal data for us, we consider it as any information we gather from you that is unique and self-identifying. We need to offer you an opportunity or please give us your passport. Obviously, your passport has your date of birth, your place of birth, your name, a likeness of you. And most of us had to submit this when we won scholarships here, but we also do not know what is going to happen that to that information beyond the purpose that it was asked for. And then this sensitive personal data, it could include genetic, biometric, and health data. You know, what are your personal preferences? Are you a vegan? Are you vegetarian? Any ailments? Uh, what do you identify as? We will not have prayer hours for Muslims and that kind of thing. And you need to submit that. But what organizers are telling us, even when we collect this information, from our volunteers and the community. We are not telling them what we are going to do with this information beyond. Um, we don't know, you know, I'm in Uganda and the person I'm giving this information to is in South Africa. I do not know the jurisdiction under which they operate. I do not know if their government will wake up like our PDPO and ask for this kind of information. So your information is somewhere in the cloud, all over Africa, all over the Wikimedia Foundation servers, you know, when you're being asked for your bank account details, and it is a worrying situation. Next slide, please. So why did we think about it at that point? We realized that very many communities are now at a period of growth where they are formally registered as legal bodies. So they are legally and statutorily obliged 
to provide some of this information. And we collect this information and hand it over to them. But the people we collected it from do not even know that we have handed this information over to the government. And then for many of us who still like the in-person activities, we ask people to register beforehand for planning purposes, or maybe at times to mitigate theft, you know, please write your details here, your name, your email address, your phone number. We never add you to a WhatsApp group. We never contact you on social media, but we have that information and you do not even know how we keep it. And then as Wikimedians, we collect, we create, we consume and enable dissemination of these resources under a variety of free licenses. That is what we are preaching but we are not aware of how to handle any other information outside of the free licenses. So let me digress a bit actually, when it comes to the uh, collection and creation. One of the laws that's affecting us in Uganda is the Computer Misuse Act. For example, Isla comes from an, for an editor thorn. And, you know, I take a picture and I say, oh, Isla is talking about this and this. Isla can actually come back and sue me for putting her information out there under the Computer Misuse Act. It, it is that brain. Read about it. <laughs> yeah. So things like free licenses, don't talk about it. Yeah. So that is the kind of legislation that we are having to work under. And it has prompted us to think about personal information, community information, and all the kind of information that we collect that the people we collect it from do not know about, or they don't know what happens to it. If not, we also do not know how to handle that information, but we are paying the government $100 a year to tell them that we collect this information. Next slide, please. So with all that in mind, that made us think about um, when it comes to user groups, the Wikimedians and the environments that we operate in, it is very, it's incumbent upon us. We need to be responsible enough to identify what role you play in the data ecosystem of the jurisdiction that you operate in, especially when it comes to personal data. You might not be only one thing. In one way, in one, on one day you're going to be a consumer, the next day you're going to be a creator, the next day you're going to be something, and these roles often overlap. But when you sit down and you're having these technical discussions and dealing with your government, you need to be responsible enough to identify what role you play in that ecosystem. And then this will also give you an opportunity to partner and work with others, with others in the same ecosystem. We actually had to bring in, on three separate occasions, three different people from the government to actually speak to our community about what it is that they meant. When do we become creators? When do we become consumers? What are we liable for? When do we open ourselves to any legal action? So we had to bring that. But if it had not been for that, we would never have had the, info, the opportunity to know who they were or for them to know the work that we do. So it will also help you to increase yourself and organizational awareness of the local legal framework, compliance to it, and how you can operate within its confines. And this is very specific when it comes to the kind of information that you have to give when you are applying for grants. One of the very specific questions we were asked when we were filling out the form to pay the money that money hurt. So one of the things that we were asked is, um, who do you give this information to? The Wikimedia Foundation. Where are its servers? Huh? We don't know. Okay. Do you know what they do with the information? Um, there was a lot that was being asked, and now we had to be to tread that ground carefully. And then as a result of that, 
I would encourage ourselves and other organizations to identify and put in place processes that meaningfully lessen the amount of data that we collect. Yes, I know we want to, um, you know, for example, give the community a feel, a sense of ownership and celebrate their achievements. But if I do not know your, the date of your birth, it's not going to kill us, yeah? So those are not things that we need for the processes of registration. And then also take responsibility and communicate what happens with the data that we collect. And I've seen the disclaimer on some that when you give us this information, we will store it for five days after this, and then we will dispose of it in this way. And then also identify the legal, the economic and social costs associated with personal data for us and just the affidavit. Then we had to bring in, it took around six months. And after that, we still don't even have a receipt. I don't know how we wrote off that expense with the Wikimedia Foundation. So that was our, um, that was our um, experience. And I hope that after this, you'll be able to go back home, identify the environment in which you operate and think about the responses that you might have within that environment. Thank you. Any opportunities to engage with the government structures uh, that are responsible for what's on these sites because I don't have the space for uh, uh, safety. Uh, so, there's a lot coming up policies, just getting them. Some of them are just measures to get money from organizations. Yeah. Um, but some of the kind of things we do in Nigeria is to have this kind of internet uh, freedom forum, you know, yeah. and bring those actors to the table to challenge some of these policies yeah. and explore opportunities to engage. Another strategy we do in Nigeria, for example, is how can we identify champions within the organization National Assembly? Mm -hmm. You can who can effect change at that you know policy level. I don't know, have, have there been opportunities for your user group to explore things like that? Because no. it might be an entry point if we don't keep no, at the moment, no, because we had never thought about it or what our relevance or what our position was in that ecosystem. So till they identified themselves to us, we had no way of knowing that. And after that, we sat down and identified any guide. So find your level somewhere in between. <laughs> it is there are still many uh, as i speak i think we have bills with at least three other organizations to pay like for our operating license and everything because of the nature of the work that we do